guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I teach third grade in Central California. And today I'm gonna to be talking about all the teacher must-haves that you will need for your classroom and just as a teacher for this upcoming year. Granted, we don't really know what we're doing next year. I know I don't, but this is going to be like a classroom list all the basics for you first year teachers, and then just some fun teacher mess ups. All right, so let's get to it. If you see me look at some, it's my iPad because this is what I made my list on. Okay, before you buy anything, check with your district and see what they provide for you. Some districts provide pencils, whiteboards, notebooks, folders, homework folders, all of that stuff. So make sure. But for me, my first year teaching, it was like, here's $300, you buy the supplies you need and then we'll reimburse you for it. So I'm just gonna tell you everything that I get, whether or not the school provides it, just so you have it in your head. So first thing I'm gonna say is get your kids pencils. I can't believe I totally forgot to buy pencils for my students last year. I was filling their pencil boxes and I was like, I don't have pencils for the pencil boxes. Oh my goodness. But yeah, pencils. And don't cheap out on pencils. You get the cheap pencils, they're going to break. They're not gonna sharpen right. They're gonna break your pencil sharpener. No. But my all time favorite pencils are the black Ticonderoga, it sounds like a disease. Ticonderoga. The black Ticonderoga pencils are by far my favorite. They last the longest, the kids love them because they're a little different. So yeah, those are my favorites. So that's what I would do for pencils. Don't get the cheap ones. And with pencils, I get erasers. So I normally give each student like a little eraser. I'll put pictures. But I also buy the little topper erasers because all the erasers that are on the pencil are long gone. So having this little one to put on really helps. So pencils, erasers, crayons. Again, just like pencils, do not cheap out on the crayons. If you get the cheap ones, they're gonna break as soon as your little kids put their hands on them. So do not get the cheap ones. Go typical Crayola. And I get two sets of crayons. So I give the kids one, and then I normally give the kids their second set when they get back from Christmas break. Because by then, they're all gone. I do do the 24 pack of crayons. I don't really like to go bigger than that, and I also don't like to go smaller. But I've tried the eight and 16 crayons, thinking like, oh, if there's fewer, they will be less likely to lose them. No, it doesn't work. Get the 24, that way when you say, get your green crayon, and they're like, I don't have a green crayon. I don't care if it's lime green, dark green, bright green, whatever it is, get a green crayon. With this, your kids each have a little packet of crayons, but you need to have a bucket full of just leftover crayons. And they don't have to be brand new. Used crayons that you would find that could be broken, all that stuff, that's totally fine. But that way when your kids do not have a crayon for an activity that you need them to participate in, they go to the bucket and they pull whatever color crayon that they need. So, so far, all the items that I've just told you are what I put in my students' pencil pouches. So, you will need pencil pouches. And in my experience, uh, plastic is not your friend here. They make the most noise. Just imagine all those 24 crayons, not in their box, just rolling around in a plastic box, shaking around. So, no. Get the cloth ones with a the zipper. They're not gonna make as much noise and your kids are gonna take better care of them because they kind of look cool, even if it's just a different color. Okay, done with the pencil pouches. Next, notebooks. So I get my students two notebooks. One at the beginning of the year, and then again, right after we come back from Christmas break, I give the new notebooks. So each student has a notebook, and this is what we just take notes in, write in, and this depends on your grade level. So for me, I like to do a spiral notebook that we just take notes in, and then I also like to do a journal. So a separate notebook that is just for our journal entries and actual writing, like narrative, expository, all that good stuff. Pretty sure I saw a teacher post that Walmart actually already had the half cut composition books. But again, with one of those big fancy cutters, you can always cut your composition books in half. So for me, two notebooks each. Okay, so those are notebooks. Do what you want with that information. It is up to you. Next on the list, folders. So I normally get two folders. I get a black folder and that is our go-to. Like if you didn't finish assignment or a workshop and you need to complete it later, you put it in the black folder. Now when we have workshop and you need to finish those items, you know exactly where they're at. And then I get a second folder. The second folder is what I use for fluency. So they call these their fluency folders. And this is for high frequency words, our reading passages, fluency practice things, reading passages with our spelling words in them, all that good stuff. So that way my students, when they are done with everything, they can pull out their fluency folders and practice all those things. Now there are file folder. So you know what you would normally put inside a file cabinet, the ones with the little tabs? If you do not have blinders, like peekaboo blinders, you can take two of these and staple them together and bam, now you've got cheap little blinders for each one of your kids. I found some stuff to show you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I did not find the folder that I was looking for, but I decided I have all these things. So might as well bring it out and show you what I have here. Let me look at my list. Speaking of folders, a portable file cabinet. So if you go to like Target, you can just find those little plastic bin thingamajigs. 
uh, Target, Walmart, Office Depot, any of that. And then you can put your folders in that. Therefore, you have a mini portable file cabinet that you can just move wherever. I like to have one of those just right behind my desk. This is just a very quick, easy way for me to grab the most common things that I use. Another fun thing that I like to use in my classroom is colored paper, those Astro Brights. I use those things for everything. Sometimes even just to make a little activity fun, just being able to just use a bright colored paper instead of a regular white one. Little things like that. The kids love the little things, keeps them on their toes. So I'd also invest in some Astro Bright paper. And then for my classroom, I love to use sentence strips. So these are super fun to use uh, just to make more interactive type games. You can laminate these and that way each student can just have one that they use all the time and practice with their sentences, be able to flip them over, use them as little mini whiteboards and stuff. Lots of really cool activities you can do with them. So I like to get the colorful ones. So sentence strip. Then with that, Whiteboards, and again, this depends. My district has provided whiteboards for me. So every year I get new whiteboards and markers. But if your district does not supply this for you, I would either get whiteboards with the markers and erasers and all of that. Again, get enough for your student to have at least two of those markers, not at a time. That way once they run out or they lose them, you have a backup. But if you don't wanna spend the money on whiteboards, I suggest grab these little clear file things because if you just put a clear piece of paper in there, now you have a whiteboard. The kids can write on these with Expo markers, erase them. There you go. If you want a worksheet, put a worksheet in them and that way the kids can write on them and chin it, show it to you real quick. And then that way you're not having to reprint stuff a bunch, but, and then that way the kids can keep this in their folder. They can keep it in a binder if they have a binder. This again, it's up to you, but cheap whiteboard nonetheless. Whatever works for you, mama. So while I'm messing with this binder that I put all of my first grade worksheets that I like to use, get binders. Get it at least three because you're going to need them for a small group. You're gonna want them for your testing. You're gonna want them for just a couple different things. So get yourself some binders. Next, for your kiddos, if we are in the classroom, I really like having these little portable table desk thing magics. So a glimpse into flexible seating, but every once in a while I have a student who just needs to be kind of separated even more so for some peace and quiet. And these work wonderful because they can just grab them and go. And most of the time you can get these on sale at like Michael's. I know that they're having a sale so you got each one for like four bucks or something like that. Maybe even three. So I stocked up on those. Okay, so another fun thing that I would consider a must have for your classroom, this won't work for virtual teaching as much, but sure we can find a way, stickers, okay? I taught first grade and my kids about lost their mind every time they got a sticker, they were so excited. I moved to third grade and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think it was really gonna work. And I walked by and started giving stickers and the class got so quiet and so focused. So every kid loves to get a sticker on their paper, okay? So I would invest in some stickers just as a way to kind of help keep the focus, you know? keep the work ethic going. You are also going to need a pencil sharpener. What brand do I get? I get, okay, so I get the X-Acto pencil sharpener and they have an amazing warranty. But this pencil sharpener I got for 30 bucks and it has a lifetime warranty, a lifetime warranty. So it breaks at least once a year. I take it in, they give me a new one. Simple as that. If it were me, I would not mess around with these other pencil sharpeners. I would get this one if it were me. Just you can't beat that warranty. You know, it's going to break, it will break. You are going to need glue. I prefer glue sticks for my kids because I just don't really trust them with glue, to be honest. So I like glue sticks. You're also going to need scissors. I have not had a school provide scissors for me. So I got myself scissors and the little stack thing that you spin around, have little cups with the scissors in them. I'll put a picture over there. So I've bought one set of those and it's lasted me this whole three years. So again, check with your district and make sure that they're providing these for you. If not, you will need chart paper. So I just went and got this little cheap one, just paper that you can make anchor charts on. I also love to use these for a group project. If we're working on a certain type of writing, I'll put one of these chart papers of all the different corners of the room and the kids will break up and each chart paper will have a different topic or sentence start that they need to complete the story with. And the kids really love the interactive writing and they're getting to work together and brainstorm. And the kids just really have a blast with it. Uh, granted with distance learning, you might have to do like one at a time goes up there to write a sentence, switch the marker, sanitizing, all that stuff, but it can be done, all right? So chart paper, that is a huge one. Next, you are going to need flashcards on flashcards on flashcards. And Miss Blair, why are those yellow? You may be asking. Yellow is proven to help kids focus 
and memorize things just a lot easier. So I really like to put our high frequency words on yellow flashcards. And then this is my flashcard holder, but girl, I get so many flashcards. I get, I'm pretty sure I have some up here. I get big flashcards. I get even bigger ones that are different colors, more so for me to use and stuff. So get yourself some flashcards. These, okay, here's an example. My first year teaching, I thought, I thought these were so cool. I bought them and I don't really use them. I don't use it for to be filed and to send home. I just don't. Uh, those just end up being piles on my desk, but I do like having big binder clips. So not a complete waste, but definitely saw them and thought like, oh, those are so cute. I want it. And I really didn't need it for that. Speaking of clips, I get one of these every year. So these binder clips, it comes with all different sizes. You got the big, medium, and small, and you end up using these for a lot of different things. So I just go get yourself one of these big ones and then a couple of the mighty ones that I was just showing you. And then a couple of these bad boys, you're gonna need them. Okay, I love to get different colored tape. So I have orange, blue, green, red, black, all different colors because I just use it for so many different things. The computer carts, I color code them. I'll color code the computers and the chargers so that way they know which color goes to what. Whenever I move their desk, put a colored tape on them, number them, move their desks around. I use my colored tape for so many things. And along with your fun colored tape, you're also gonna need regular scotch tape and I love to get double-sided tape. I find that this comes in clutch like so many times. So don't forget regular tape and double-sided tape. Staples. Always need a ton of staples because you're gonna go to that board and try to staple something in and you're gonna run out every time. So yeah, oh, and tip, do not let your kids use your stapler. Don't do it. At least three staplers. You're gonna need one for your desk, for the back of the room, side of the room. I'd say at least three staplers and a lot of staples. Oh, and make sure the staplers that open up all the way, not just the press. That way you can staple into the walls and stuff like that. You guys have seen a stapler here, fine. Okay, so I think that's about it for the classroom stuff. So moving on to the teacher side of this, you're gonna need a ton of posters. I suggest getting different colors. Also, you're gonna need a lot of those little tabs and these help a lot with your TE, your little teacher's edition books. So you can tab things. I like putting post-its in there that way I can write little notes to like my sub or to myself or to kind of help me as I'm going through my TE. Remember some extra things. So post-its and tabs, you're going to need a lot of those. Again, I'd get a bunch of different colors that way you can color code things and it really helps you organize. Next, you are going to need highlighters, expo markers, and Sharpies. Sharpies, Sharpies, Sharpies. My goodness. Uh, again, those are not for the kids. Those are for me, but I lose them, so I need lots of Sharpies. These teacher things are going to be more so fun little stuff that's a little bonus for you. So first I have, I loved this thing. I didn't use it as much as last year, but oh, just whip myself in the face. But this thing was next to me at all times my first two years. I loved it because I could have my phone here. If I open it, bam, here's everything I needed. I had my tabs that I could use at freaking all times. I didn't even plan this. Different kinds of tabs. And then I could always keep my pens in here. Kept an attendance log in the back. That way if a fire drill happened or anything like that, I always had my kids stuff on me. Uh, this is Better Together Daily Pouch. I do not remember where I got it, but I'll put the link in the bio and I'll find out where I got it. Next, a laminator. So I love this personal laminator. I use it, I use it so much. And then I get these Scotch Thermal Laminating Pouches. So for these ones, $10 for a hundred on Amazon, score. Because otherwise you'll try going to Michael's like I did, where they're trying to sell you 10 for like 20 bucks. No, thank you. I'm actually gonna have both of these and pretty much all this stuff on my Amazon storefront. So I'll put the link in my bio. You can click that, check that out. And if you buy from there, it really helps support me. So if you do that, thank you. If not, no worries. And then my favorite thing that made me feel like an official fancy teacher was my own personal little cutter thing. Something about this gives you so much power. It's still scary though, because I was always afraid of chopping my fingers off and still am. So yeah, small, light, this is a, again, swing line. I love that thing. Again, you will use your laminator and your cutter 
so much. It was literally like mid first year I went out and bought these items. So I would, if I were you, if you have the extra money for that. Little charts. So you can get these at GW. They might even have them at Target now, but I would get a pack of these. So you have them in a couple different colors for different things because you will, you will need them. So in California, at least, you need to have a spot in your room where your kids can see how they're doing on high frequency words, fluency, addition, subtraction, or multiplication, wherever you're at there, and then reading logs. So you're gonna need these charts to be able to track that. So yes, for me, I have like a fun little high frequency word wall so they can kind of see how they're moving up and stuff like that. But for simple things like reading logs and times tables and stuff like that, I use those little charts. What else? Oh, duh. So teacher fun thing, this cart. <laughs> So I love this cart uh, for my small group. So I have this right next to my little small group. That's what most of these supplies on here are for. Uh, I did change it into a distance learning cart. So again, even if we go virtual, this really helps me to have all my supplies in one spot. So this cart I think was like 25, 30 bucks. Again, this will be on my Amazon storefront, but I got this one at Michael's. My lovely mother actually got it for me. I also have the rainbow one. So the rainbow one that has all the different drawers, I use that as well. So yeah, I would get one of these. They're super cute and light, super easy to put together. Just for a little extra flair, I love to get colorful flare pens, just like majority of the teachers out there, but it really makes a difference when I'm trying to show kids and look for red as our subject, blue is our predicate, stuff like that. So it really helps create a better visual for kids learning if you can color code things. Another pen version that is fun mostly for the teachers are the Mr. Smelly pens, Mr. Sketch scented markers. That's what they're called. Those definitely make making all these anchor charts a little more fun. That way you're not smelling all the Sharpie themes and you get a little fun smell in there. And the kids love them too. Okay, but when you are in Target and you are seeing all the school supplies and teacher aisle and everything looks like you must have it, it's cute, you need it, right? No, don't get it unless you know I'm going to use it for this. I'm going to put it, hmm, I'm going to use it, hmm. If you don't have an answer to any of those questions for this thing that you want, you don't need it and it's gonna end up going somewhere in your desk or getting lost somewhere and even though you think you'll find a reason to use it, you won't. So don't waste your money on stuff that you don't have a direct purpose for. Um, teacher side of things, I do like to have a desk organization part. So, so the one that I have holds my post-its, my pens, flashcards, a big file thing to put just full on papers in. And I love that. It really helps me clear the clutter on my desk. For decorations, you don't need to get too crazy. The basic stuff you'll need are like borders, Borders. Borders are really the only basic thing that you need that can add a flair to your walls. You know, you don't need to get crazy with the decorations. I made a video about the three big mistakes that I made when I first started teaching. I'll put the link up here and in the bio and just one of them was just over decorating and you just, you don't need that. Simple. If it were me, I would not mess around with these other pencil sharpeners. Okay, and last thing that you're going to need just on the teacher side and just most likely at home, a printer. So yes, I'm sure you will have a printer in your classroom or you'll at least have one at your school that everyone can use, but I would get a printer in my classroom if you don't already have one. That's a game changer. So I'd get a printer in my classroom. Uh, if you can't do that for whatever reason, your district won't let you, definitely go in for your home. You're gonna end up using it, okay? If you have a school one, most of the time you only end up having so many copies and stuff like that. So you're gonna need a printer, you're going to need paper, and you're gonna need ink. So go about that however you want. I like to stack up and get the box of paper at the beginning of the year. I order that through my school, that way I'm loaded up because I've had one school that doesn't, doesn't count for paper. You have to bring your own paper, even to use just the school's printer. So get yourself some paper, that way you can use it at school or at home. All right, well I think that's all my list of school supplies that you're gonna need for the classroom and some extra stuff for teachers just to make our job a little more fun, a little easier. That's all I have for you this evening. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.